Hi everyone, I'm Golda and I handle library marketing at Norton. This video has highlights of our spring and summer titles and a peek at some of our fall titles. Please check out the description where I've posted a link to our full children's catalog because we have many more great books coming out this year. And I'll post another video soon with the fall titles from Tilbury House, Thames and Hudson, and the other publishers that we distribute. We were so happy for Jarrett and Jerome Pumphrey because the old truck was given an honor in the writer category by the Ezra Jack Keats Award Foundation. And their new book, The Old Boat, was just published in March. From A Whisper to a Rallying Cry by Paula Yu just came out a couple weeks ago. This is a young adult nonfiction title that tells the story of the murder of Vincent Chin in Detroit in 1982 which brought the Asian American community to the streets in protest of injustice. Extensively researched from court transcripts and interviews with key case witnesses, Paula Yu has crafted a suspenseful, nuanced, and authoritative portrait of a pivotal moment in civil rights history and a man who became a symbol against hatred and racism. It now has five starred reviews and was recently mentioned in the New York Times. Dumplings for Lily is a fun picture book about food, family, helping others, and celebrating cultures through food. Lily is spending the day with her nai nai, and they are going to make baos, which are one of Lily's favorite foods. But when they realize they're out of cabbage, Lily is sent off to ask one of the other grandmas in the building. Lily ends up running up and down the stairs to deliver various ingredients to all the grandmas in the building, who are making their versions of dumplings from their cultures. At the end, it's time for a picnic with everyone sharing baos, pierogi, ravioli, tamales, beef patties, and more. And then the best surprise of all, Lily's mom and dad come home from the hospital with their new dumpling, a baby brother for Lily. There's a recipe for baos at the end of the book, and readers will learn some of the names for grandmother in a variety of other cultures, and get a subtle lesson in the joy of sharing food from many backgrounds. Albert Einstein Was a Dope is the first book in our new Wait What? biography series by Dan Gutman, who you probably know from the My Weird School series. The books are narrated by brother and sister Paige and Turner, who try to outdo each other by finding interesting facts about the person. There are lively illustrations and more resources at the back of each book. The second book in the series is Muhammad Ali Was a Chicken? And then we have an Amelia Earhart book scheduled for this fall. Each book has the facts that your teacher would want you to know, but also has all sorts of other fascinating pieces of information presented in an entertaining way. Each title is being published in hardcover, paperback, and ebook at the same time. My next two titles are part of a new partnership between Norton Young Readers and Accord Literary to bring African writers to U.S. publication. Elizabeth Irene Beatty is a children's book writer from Accra, Ghana, and this will be her first book to be published in the U.S. Crossing the Stream is a middle grade novel starring a boy named Otto, who is sent to stay with his paternal grandmother on the weekends. He doesn't know her very well, so he's a little unsure. But he loves hearing stories about his father, who passed away when Otto was younger. This orange couch that you see on the cover plays a large role in the stories and becomes a tool for the grandmother helping Otto to grieve the loss of his father. This is a universal story of healing and love, perfect for readers of Shouting at the Rain, The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise, and The Stars Beneath Our Feet. The second title from our partnership with Accord is called Playing a Dangerous Game by Patrick O'Chen. This is a friendship novel with a little bit of mystery set in Kenya in the 1970s. Four boys who are best friends discover a deserted house believed to be haunted. As they explore the house, they learn that it's not ghosts they have to fear, but a malevolent gang of coffee smugglers. The novel introduces readers to another culture along with themes of adolescence and coming of age that are immediately recognizable. You could recommend this to fans of The Season of Sticks Malone or The Last Last Day of Summer. 
We are having a book list webinar on June 17th with the two founders of Accord Literary and these two authors, plus the author of a YA novel coming out next year. Larger Than Life by Anne Quirk is an accessible, informed, and timely biography of Lyndon Johnson that centers his life and presidency around the passing of the Voting Rights Act. The biography talks about LBJ's childhood in rural Texas, learning politics from his parents, his time teaching at a small town school, and his days in Congress as majority leader and as vice president. Those chapters are alternated with chapters that cover his work as president alongside civil rights leaders and the passage of the Voting Rights Act. An epilogue discusses the Supreme Court's 2013 ruling that struck down key portions of the act, which helps kids see the relevance to today as voting rights are still under attack. I Get Loud by David We May is a follow-up to one of my favorites from last year, I Go Quiet. The rich and detailed illustrations help tell the story of a girl who finds her voice when she finds a friend. There's also a subtle refugee or immigration story when the two get separated, but there is hope and they find each other again at the end. Dovey Undaunted is a new biography of Dovey Johnson Roundtree by celebrated children's writer Tanya Bolden. Dovey was a groundbreaking civil rights lawyer, and she was also a pioneer outside the field of law. Tracing Roundtree's life from her childhood in Jim Crow, North Carolina, through her adulthood, Tanya Bolden illuminates a little-known figure in American history who believed the law should serve the people and places her firmly in the context of 20th century civil rights and African-American culture. Norton Young Readers has launched a new series called Eyewitness in collaboration with Dave Eggers and the Hawkins Project. These are narrative nonfiction titles for young readers told from the point of view of the young person who lived through the experience. The first book is Hurricane, My Story of Resilience by Salvador Gomez Colon. After Hurricane Maria in 2017, the teenaged Salvador couldn't ignore the basic needs of his community. With the help of his mother and some of her contacts, he set up a foundation called Light and Hope for Puerto Rico and raised more than $100,000 to purchase and distribute solar-powered lamps and hand-cranked washing machines to households in need. His writing is accessible and engaging, and shows the kind of determination and resilience that young activists continue to draw on. Accused, My Story of Injustice by Adama Ba. On March 24, 2005, FBI agents stormed into the family's apartment and arrested Adama and her father. Falsely accused of being a potential suicide bomber, Adama spent weeks in a detention center being questioned under suspicion of terrorism. Adama recounts the events surrounding her arrest and its impact on her life, the harassment, humiliation, and persecution she faced for crimes she did not commit. Accused brings forward a crucial first-person perspective of American culture post 9-11 and the country's discrimination against Muslim Americans. Both Salvador and Adama were guests on our recent Norton Young Readers preview where they were interviewed by Paula Yu and I'll post a link to that recording in the description. We also have two titles coming out in paperback this summer. The Super Miraculous Journey of Freddie Yates is a fun and heartwarming adventure novel that I really loved. Freddie Yates and his two best friends go on a road trip to find Freddie's biological father and they get into all sorts of trouble. This was published in hardcover in May of 2020, so it was right during the lockdown and we love for you to give it another chance. Free Lunch by Rex Ogle won the Yelsa Excellence in Nonfiction Award, and we're bringing it out in paperback in August ahead of his new memoir that I'll talk about in a minute. Doing Business by Sean Harris. Harris has illustrated several books for Dave Eggers, and his own book, Have You Ever Seen a Flower, was just recently published. In Doing Business, he's tackling an important topic, where is the appropriate place to do your business? And by business, I mean using the toilet. Somebody has left their business on the carpet in the living room. 
But who was it? Suspense builds as suspects are rhythmically, methodically eliminated. We know it wasn't the baby or daddy or the elephant at the zoo. Spoiler alert, it was the dog. This humorous and bright picture book is a fun alternative to your usual toilet training picture books. Dad Bakes by Katie Yamasaki is publishing in September. She's the author and illustrator of Everything Naomi Loved and When the Cousins Came. Dad Bakes is the story of a father and daughter, and it's not stated explicitly in the story, but the father has recently come home after being incarcerated and he's working as a baker. So he uses baking as a way to reconnect with his daughter. Katie Yamasaki has worked with a lot of different communities on art and mural projects, including with people who have been incarcerated, where they use art as a way of telling their stories and a way of connecting with friends and family. The book will have an author's note at the back, and you can find out more about her work at katieyamasaki.com. Rosemary Wells, famous for her Mother Goose books and for Max and Ruby, now illustrates a selection of 12 A.A. A. Milne poems in Poems from When We Were Very Young, including my favorite, Halfway Down. And every time I read this poem, I get that Muppet song stuck in my head. So thanks, Rosemary. She spreads many of the poems over several pages and gives more illustrations to each poem so that they read more like a story. No one could replace Ernest Shepard, and Rosemary hasn't tried to. Instead, she's offered her own appreciative and celebratory take on the verse. Only Ants for Andy is the second book by Jashar Awan. Andy is an anteater, and he only eats ants. He only plays with trucks. He only likes one song. Then Andy goes over to his friend's house for a sleepover. But Sam the Sloth plays with spaceships, not trucks. His family listens to different music. And worst of all, they're having grubs for dinner, not ants. And Sam is allergic to ants. But if Andy can enjoy playing with spaceships and learning new songs, maybe he can eat grubs too? This humorous picture book offers a gentle lesson on trying new things and is a wonderful follow-up to Jashar Awan's first book, What a Lucky Day. Voyage of the Sparrowhawk recently won a Costa Children's Book Award in the UK. This is a middle grade historical adventure set just after the end of World War I in England and France, and I've always loved historical fiction, so I am a big fan of this one. Two friends set off on a narrow boat to try to find a missing brother and to get away from some unsavory adults. Funny, heartwarming, and wise, Voyage of the Sparrowhawk is full of high stakes, twists, connection, and adventure. Rex Ogle won the Yalsa Excellence in Nonfiction Award for his debut memoir, Free Lunch, and now he's back with Punching Bag. While Free Lunch straddled middle grade and YA, Punching Bag should definitely be shelved in the teen section. Rex describes his struggle to survive, reflects on his complex, often paradoxical relationship with his passionate, fierce mother, and charts the trajectory of his stepdad's anger. Through it all, Rex threads moments of grace and humor that act as beacons of light in the darkness. Brittany Cooper, Chanel Craft Tanner, and Susanna Morris are all members of the Crunk Feminist Collection, and Brittany Cooper is the author of Eloquent Rage. They have teamed up to write Feminist AF, a guide to crushing girlhood, scheduled for October. This is like a guidebook written by your older sister or your cool aunt, who has experience and can help teenagers work through all sorts of issues. Written for loud and rowdy girls, quiet and nerdy girls, girls who rock naturals, girls who wear weave, outspoken and opinionated girls, girls still finding their voice, queer girls, trans girls, and gender non-binary young people who want to make the world better. Feminist AF uses the insights of feminism to address issues relevant to today's young people. 
And now for some books from our distribution clients. I'll start with Tilbury House, which is an independent publisher based in Maine. Did you know that one medium-sized whale carcass delivers as much food to the dark, cold ocean depths as 4,000 years of sinking food particles? Whale Fall Cafe by Jackie Sewell and Dan Tavis takes us through the fascinating ecosystem and food chain that surrounds the fallen whale carcass. It might sound gross, but I was really fascinated to see how nature continues to find ways to survive and thrive. And the illustrations are cartoonish enough not to be gruesome. The Cottonwood Tree. In this picture book, a baby boy and a cottonwood seedling grow together over the years. The young boy climbs the cottonwood's branches to watch the river and dream. As a father, he brings his daughter to visit. As an old man, he grieves to see the tree knocked down by a storm, but he rejoices when he sees new sprouts emerging from the stump because he knows the tree will live on in new forms. Extra information throughout the book relates the natural histories of animals in and around the tree, and the back matter offers further resources. My Monster Mufi is a picture book that can be read on its own for the story or used as an introduction to writing and literary devices. Each spread has an unobtrusive drop-down banner that indicates what literary device is being used on the page. As the girl tells the story of her cat, Mufi, she uses idioms, hyperboles, allusions, similes, and more. The back of the book will have more information about figures of speech and literary devices. The first blade of sweetgrass. In this Own Voices Native American picture book, a modern Wabanaki girl is excited to accompany her grandmother for the first time to harvest sweetgrass for basket making. Musquan must overcome her impatience while learning to distinguish sweetgrass from the other salt marsh grasses, but slowly the spirit and peace of her surroundings speak to her and she gathers sweetgrass as her ancestors have done for centuries, leaving the first blade she sees to grow for future generations. This sweet, authentic story includes back matter about traditional basket making and a short Wabanaki glossary. Timson Hudson is a well-known publisher of art and architecture books for adults, and their children's line has grown quite a bit over the past few years. How to be an art rebel. Under the playful guidance of Leo, an art rebel cat with a cause, this book takes young readers on an alternative tour of an art museum to discover eight different types of art. Portraits, surrealism, ancient sculpture, abstract art, naked people in art, still life paintings, and contemporary art. Instead of telling children what they ought to think, Leo equips his readers with enough knowledge to respond to art on their own terms. And another whale book. The Secret Life of Whales has really beautiful watercolor illustrations and all sorts of facts and interesting things that kids might want to know about whales. The author has worked closely with the Husafik Whale Museum in Iceland to create a beautiful, factually correct, and detailed overview of everything to do with whales. And the book also talks about pollution and the threats to the oceans that affect whales. In King to in Common Tells All, readers hear firsthand what it was like to be rudely awakened from the afterlife by archaeologist Howard Carter, who discovered Tut's tomb in 1922. Listen to Tut brag about his collection of 18 karat gold sandals, discern the fake news from the truth about Tut's premature death, and relish the gory detail of Tut's mummification in this exciting book by Egyptologist Chris Naunton. This book helps young readers learn about Egyptian history through the voice of one of history's most interesting kings. The Library Book. Zach would much rather watch TV than flip through a boring book, so he's not excited about a field trip to the library. But thanks to his friend's stubborn efforts to show him the magic and excitement of reading, Zach finally finds a book that he can't put down. And finally, if you have some sports-obsessed kids at your school or library, 
Abbeville Press has a series of soccer books with the newest one being Stars of Women's Soccer, which just came out in April. And in September, they're expanding to basketball with Stars of the NBA. These hardcovers are full of photographs, statistics, and biographical information about each of the included athletes. So I'll put a link in the description to our 2021 catalog so you can see the rest of our children's books coming out this year. You can also see page samples and request digital arcs from Edelweiss, and I keep adding more digital arcs as soon as they come in. Please reach out if you have any questions, and thank you all so much for all of your work during these difficult times and all of the work that you always do for your communities. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.